This is an example of a 15-year-old child who presented with headaches. On the sagittal T1 weighted scan, we see a mass which is indenting the brain stem and has a somewhat serrated appearance to it on the T1 weighted scan. We next go to the flare scan and scrolling through the axial scans, we see a mass which is to the right of the pons and extending to the cerebellopontine angle cistern. It has low signal intensity, but not exactly the same signal intensity as the cerebrospinal fluid. The next pulse sequence that we look at is the axial high resolution T2 weighted scan in the CIS protocol. And as we scroll from below up to the lesion, we see a mass which is somewhat irregular has intermediate signal intensity on the T2-weighted cis sequence, and we get a better appreciation of the indentation on the brain stem. The mass extends to the cerebellopontine angle cistern where we can see compression of the seventh and eighth nerve complex extending to the internal auditory canal. As we continue further superiorly, we also will note the displacement of the right fifth cranial nerve by the mass, the displacement laterally of the nerve extending to the Meckel's cave region seen here. The next pulse sequence to look at is our diffusion weighted scan because when we have an extra axial mass, our differential diagnosis includes cerebellopontine angle cistern schwannomas, meningiomas, arachnoid cysts, and epidermoids. In this case, when we scroll through our diffusion weighted pulse sequence, we see very high signal intensity in the mass. The mass, therefore, is unlikely to represent an arachnoid cyst since it does not have the same signal intensity as the cerebrospinal fluid within the fourth ventricle. Bright signal intensity on a diffusion weighted scan, which is corroborated with low signal intensity on the ADC map, is highly suggestive of a diagnosis of an epidermoid. To make the, this diagnosis, we should also look at the post-contrast scans. Epidermoids typically do not show contrast enhancement as opposed to, for example, a schwannoma or a meningioma. So I'm going to scroll to the end of the study where the post-contrast scans can be observed. And although the patient clearly was moving quite a bit, so that we have some motion blur on this axial post-contrast scan, we note that the lesion shows absence of contrast enhancement. That is highly indicative of an epidermoid. So the combination of features of a cystic lesion, which does not show contrast enhancement, but which has high signal intensity and restricted diffusion on the diffusion weighted imaging in the cerebellopontine angle cistern is highly suggestive of epidermoid as the most likely diagnosis.